Hi boys and girls, as we begin our lesson today, please make sure that you have your sixth commandment banner piece and your Bible and um, good listening ears and a happy heart and we'll be ready to begin. All right, I'd like to start with prayer, so please bow your heads with me so we don't get distracted and let's talk to our great creator. Lord God, we um, are so thankful that we can have Sunday school even through video form, but Lord, we look forward to the day when we can meet together and learn of you and learn from your word um, while being face to face. Father, please uh, work inside our hearts, work inside our minds, and help us to be obedient to the things that we learn um, about you and about your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, before we do dive into our lesson, I thought we would do a little review. So, the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt. They cried out to God, and God heard them and sent Moses and began rescuing them. How did he rescue them? through a series of plagues that some came on both the Israelites and the Egyptians, and some came just on the Egyptians. God show, was showing his great might and his great power as he began to set the wheel in motion for rescuing them. Then uh, the Pharaoh released them. They uh, traveled all of, with all of their things and all of their children, and they came to the Red Sea. God did a miracle there for them, and he parted the Red Sea uh, using Moses to do so. And they walked through the Red Sea on dry land. Then God brought them to Mount Sinai, where he gave them the law, the Ten Commandments. Um, and that's what we're learning about right now. And after that, um, he led them to the promised land, but unfortunately, um, if you'll remember the story of the spies, um, and they went in and they scouted out the land, and unfortunately, the people did not believe that most of the spies, except for two, said, we can't do what God told us to do. We cannot conquer this promised land. The people are too large. And because of the disbelief of the people, they were punished. There was a consequence and they could not enter the promised land. They had to wander around the wilderness, the desert for 40 years. And during that time, the people who disbelieved, who did not believe God, they died. And then after 40 years, their children were now ready to go in and conquer, uh, the promised land that God had promised them. Um, he did this using uh, Joshua and Caleb, who uh, were spies who had believed in God's promises. And so they went in and they conquered the land. Now, when they conquered the land, uh, you'll remember that one of the first things that happened was they came to the city of Jericho. And what happened there? The people... Um, were up in the city. Uh, Israelites marched around, they following God's commands, and did it His way. And then on the seventh day, I believe it was the seventh day, the um, the city came tumbling down. You know the song: the walls came tumbling down. What happened to all those people in the city? Well, did they live or did they die? If you said they died, you're right. And it, God continued to lead his people into the promised land. And um, as they conquered, they, as they waged war against the people who were living there, um, God did indeed allow them, the Israelites, to kill the people that were there. 
so that's what happened. That's the history up into this point. Um, let's look at our commandment for today. I'd like you to open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Um, if you need to pause it to find that, that is perfectly fine. And then we'll read together in our Bibles. Verse 13. Oh, this is a long one. Are you ready? You shall not murder. I'm just teasing. It was a very short one. <laughs> you shall not murder. Does this verse say that we should not kill? Think about that for a minute. No, it doesn't say we should not kill. It says you shall not murder. What's the difference? Well, murder is killing some, somebody illegally. It's purposing in your mind. It's thinking in your mind. That's what I want to do. I want to end their life. They need to die. And you're doing it on purpose. It's not in self-defense. It's not protecting anyone. It's with evil in your mind. That is what murder is. We also call murder unlawful killing. Now it's kind of a big word, but it just means it's not allowed by law. <clears throat> when God told the Israelites to go into the promised land and kill the people of the prom that were already living there, God was using this to punish the wicked people that were living there um, through war on them. And he was not telling his people to break the sixth commandment. Um, sometimes there are wars, um, like World War II, when Hitler was killing all uh, the Jews and trying to have this certain type of person that would survive. Um, and the Americans came in and some other nations came in and fought against Hitler. They were actually protecting the lives of the Jewish people. They were not going in to murder. They were going in to protect. And in doing that protection, they did have to kill at times. All right, right now, I would like for you to pause the video and put your sixth commandment banner piece on your banner. commandment seems pretty simple. Uh, it says don't murder. But remember, every commandment has both a negative to it and a positive to it. So think about the positive side of this commandment. If you're not supposed to murder, um, end someone's life with evil intent, then you are supposed to protect life. It sounds pretty easy, but as we all know, um, sometimes keeping the commandments is not as easy as it may first seem. <laughs> right. I want you to consider this banana. As we consider this commandment and the different layers that it may have in it, I want you to consider this banana. What color is this banana? If you said yellow with brown spots, and maybe you might have said green, you're right. Some of you are deep thinkers, and so you might have had some other things that you said about this banana. Stick with me and see if you were thinking the way that I'm thinking. Uh, this banana is yellow, but that's not all it is. That's not the only color it is. If we open it up, and we peel this layer here of skin, what color do you see on the inside? It's kind of white, right? White and mushy. Um, and if we cut off a piece of this banana, well, I can't see it in my banana, but some bananas have little seeds on the inside. Um, and from those little seeds, little teeny tiny seeds, grow a banana tree. And then the fruit of the banana is here. 
So on the inside it has a seed, and usually you'll find it right here. I'm gonna break it off a little, a little more. Mmm, that's good. Do you guys have a banana? If you do, it'd be a healthy snack to have right now. Mmm, I love bananas. Let me break. Oh, I found it. Okay. So here, you can see that dark spot right there. That's the little tiny seed. All right. Now what do I do with my banana? Ugh. One thing I don't like about bananas is they get your hands all messy. All right, all better. <laughs> so a person who just says that a banana is yellow either doesn't really understand, maybe they've never opened up a banana and seen the inside of it. Um, maybe they've never broken it apart and seen the seed. Um, they haven't looked very closely at the banana if you if they only think it's yellow. But a person, that's kind of like a person who thinks that the sixth commandment is really easy to keep. Um, that just means that um, we've only ever heard the one line, you shall not murder. And we think that, and we haven't really looked closely at it. So right now, I would like you to pause and use your discussion card with um, a grown-up that's close to you and look up Matthew chapter 5 verses 21 and 22 and answer the questions there. What is Jesus saying about the sixth commandment? So you can see from reading that scripture that Jesus is not just talking about wrong actions, but he's also talking about wrong attitudes. And where does a wrong attitude start? Well, I know I'm not the only one who's had a bad attitude. <laughs> that attitude starts in our minds. And so Jesus is um, saying, calling us to, to really uh, think hard, like what is going on in my mind? Um, sometimes we can have anger. Uh, something happens like um, a brother or a sister takes uh, something that's very special to you and they don't return it. Well, goodness, that makes us angry or we feel angry because that happened. And, uh, if, and sometimes they don't even come and ask forgiveness and we just stay angry and maybe we don't feel like mom and dad um, handled it the way we wanted them to handle it and we just get angrier and angrier and angrier and then we let that anger build and pretty soon our brother or sister comes along that same one that took that special toy from us and we see our opportunity we stick our foot out and we trip them and they fall and they hurt themselves and that anger has turned to bitterness which then turned into an action where we hurt another person. And Jesus is saying here that um, we need to take very careful look at our thoughts because from our, th our thoughts and from our words, that's what's going on deep inside of our hearts, deep inside of who we really are. And if we don't take control of those, then something worse could happen, like murder. Now, I want to show you uh, that this happened really uh, in uh, the Bible. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to look. start looking at verse um, 3. Now, Adam and Eve had two sons. One was named Cain, and the other was named Abel. And this is what happened. Follow along with me. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. That means he um, was kind of like a gardener and he harvested some of his fruit and he brought it as an offering. Abel, on his part, also brought the first of his flock. He was more of a shepherd and he brought the fat portions and the Lord looked on Abel's offering with good regard. That means he was pleased with Abel's offering. But for Cain and his offering, he was not pleased. So Cain became angry and his face fell. You know what it looks like when we're angry about something. <clears throat> I 
and I'm sure you can make quite the faces just like I can. <laughs> now, get this. He was angry, but listen to what God says to him. The Lord said to Cain in verse 6, Why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at your door and its desire is for you. But listen to this, you must master it. Well, I want to stop right there before we get to the end of the story, because it's right here that God is giving Cain a choice. He's warning him. He's saying the anger that's inside of you, it could turn into something very, very bad. So you need to repent of it. You need to confess it for what it is. You need to turn away from it. You need to be the master over it. Don't let the anger be master over you and lead you to do something else. Um, and now let's look and see what Cain chose to do. Look at verse 8. Cain told Abel his brother, and it came about when they were in a field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Oh, oh my. Boys and girls, I don't have to tell you, you already know this, that that was very wrong and that is going to have severe, very bad consequences. And if you keep reading, you'll see that God gave Cain the consequences to his actions. But the point is that our emotions are kind of like um, a timer going off. Have you ever um, been in the kitchen with your mom cooking and... Um, you put something in the oven and you set the timer for maybe five minutes or 10 minutes or 30 minutes and then the the sound goes off now my kitchen timer goes like this beep 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 some timers go so what does your timer do well timers warn us they warn us that something is done or something's about to happen if we don't get that thing that we're cooking, those yummy chocolate chip cookies or brownies, or maybe it's our favorite dinner. If we don't get that out of the oven, it's going to burn and then it's not going to be good. It's, not, it's going to be yucky. So our emotions, the anger, the resentment, the bitterness, the jealousy. Have you ever felt jealous? You wanted what someone else had. Um, sometimes we feel hate. Sometimes we want to get back at somebody, uh, that's called revenge. All of those feelings are a timer going off going beep, 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 watch out. Repent of this, go to God, ask for help, because if you don't, you're going to do something that is going to be very sinful. It's a warning to us. All right, I want you to pause and discuss with your grown up. James chapter 4 verses 1 through 4 and I want you to discuss why we break the Ten Commandments. All right, welcome back. Um, we do break the Ten Commandments. Um, I don't know what you discussed, but I know one very obvious reason is because we were born sinful, just like Adam and Eve. Um, but I do want to just encourage you that when you feel those emotions that come, that be thankful that God is pointing them out to you. And when you hear that, that when your conscience bothers you about that and you realize, oh, I'm angry and God doesn't like it, that I'm thinking about how much I want to not like that person or hurt that person, be thankful that God warned you. And then ask him for help, boys and girls. We all need to do that. All right. Now I'd like you to pause and discuss one more time with your grown-up, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 25. And I would like you to look at what is both the positive and the negative of this commandment, you shall not murder.
All right. Well, hopefully that uh, you discussed um, some positives of this command. Um, and one of the positives that I see uh, is that we are supposed to protect others, um, that we're supposed to not want to hurt them, but do good to them. And you can find that all throughout the Bible. This is not just an Old Testament thing. This is a New Testament thing. This is a God-given command that we are to do good to one another and protect one another. So um, I would like you to uh, remember that God calls us to love one another. And remember, when we break the commands, it is like adding another weight to our bag when we don't love God, when we worship other things besides God, when we take God's name in vain or we profane his name by word or by action, when we um, commit murder, um, what are the other ones? Sometimes I have to go back and look in scripture when we do not keep the Sabbath holy, when we do not honor our father and mother. Okay, let's, it adds weights to this bag that we're carrying and oh my goodness, it's getting really heavy. Can you imagine carrying this around all the time? Oh, it would be very tiring. So just remember, boys and girls, that God has not given us his commands to be a burden um, necessarily, but when we break them, it becomes a burden to us, a burden that we cannot uh, lift on our own, a burden that needs someone to come and take that burden from us, and that someone is Jesus. And we will continue to talk about that as the weeks go on, um, but I want you to keep that in your mind that the weight of sin can only be lifted by Jesus. I love you all, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.